Welcome to Faith Revival Place International. I'm your host, Minister M.G. Mays. Let us begin in prayer. We thank you, Father. We love you. We love your presence. We love being obedient to your word and relationship. We honor your word by reading it as well as studying it and therefore honoring you because we read the word and, and to make our relationship stronger with you and to know your ways and by guidance of the Holy Spirit. Father, I ask that your refining fire fall down on the, the people and as well as myself and not all of us and, and that we be full of your presence and, and holy fire to do your will on earth as it is in heaven. And we love you, we honor you in all that we do in the image of Yahweh. He always saves. Jesus Christ, Yeshua, we pray. Amen. And today's sermon is called On Fire for Yahweh. Let's be on fire for Yahweh. Let's do everything for Him. Let's, let's speak for Him. Let's just love God and, and be here for God. And everything we do, ingrained for doing for Him. Amen. Doing for God's image, Yeshua Jesus and Yahweh Himself. Amen. Through the Holy Spirit, all these things will be accomplished. The Holy Spirit, yielding to the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. Amen. So let us start out by going to Job chapter 8, verse 2 through 7, um, jumping into 20 and 22 of that verse as well. So let us read. And the word of God says, How long will you go on talking like this? What, what you are saying is a, a raging wind. Do, does God disturb, uh, disort, disort judgment? Does Shaddai prevent justice? If you children sin against him, he left them to be a victim or their own offenses if you will earnestly seek God Elohim and plead for Shaddai's favor and if you are pure and upright then he will arouse himself for you and fulfill your needs then although your beginnings are small your future will be very great indeed amen and so if we will concentrate on the refinement of God on our lives, if we will allow his, the fire of the Holy Spirit, which is Yahweh's Spirit, go upon us and help us and refine us and, and his fire of compassion and longing for us and longing for him, allowing that. And if we earn, that's earnestly seeking God. And and uh, and it's the Lord also showing us that He will repay those that have wronged us. So when the government has wronged a, a believer, take it to the take it to the bank to the credit union because God is gonna repay them for their evil they tried to put on a believer. And believe me. The kidnappings are coming back on on the government places on whoever the harms one that is trying to be refined by God's presence, trying to be refined by the Word of God, and and accepting the the fire of of, of Yahweh's pack compassion and adoration in their life. So let us go on. Look, God Elohim will not reject the blameless man or woman, nor will he upheld the wrongdoers. He will let fill your mouth with laughter. See, even, even when the world tries to steal your joy, fellow believer, know that God's going to bring joy back in there, one way or another. And I don't care what the darn world's trying to do. 
Because Jesus is going to make it better in your life if you trust him. And trust the fire's compassion of God on your life. And, and know that the fire of God is going to protect you from the wicked people in government places. And other corporations in, in the world and all the other things that go on. The fire of Yahweh will protect you. Keep keep doing what you know to be true and justice and the word through the word and the relationship you have with him and your lips will be shouting of joy those who hate you will be cloaked in shame are you ready to be cloaked in shame a lot of people in government and a lot of people and and, and uh, the, these huge corporations that are stealing people's lands. Yes, you. Are you ready to be clothed in shame? Because I'm telling you what, the joy of the Lord is going to rise up in your heart now. Every one of you, every, every Christian and Jew that's being picked on and toiled on in this world. Amen. And the, the tents of the wicked will cease to exist. Are you ready to cease to exist, you evil senators, you evil prime ministers, you evil presidents, you evil governors, you evil mayor? Are you ready to not exist anymore? God's going to do this. We don't have to lift a finger but prayer and the refinement of God's fire on our lives. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us go on now. Let's go to Acts chapter 2, verse 17 to 21. See, this was planned by the Holy Spirit. The sermon was planned by the Holy Spirit. The Lord knows ahead of time what needs to be said. And right now this needs to be said. Because there's a lot of persecution going against believers in this world. And the Lord says... I have the last laugh on you wicked people, so you better repent now before you, you're going to be crying and weeping and gnashing teeth, knowing what you did to one of my beloveds in this world. You know, and that's including what's going on in Nevada. You know, and if you don't think God's going to be very temperate and very the wrath, believe it again because I'm telling you what you better you better leave them people alone in Nevada because I'm telling you what if you you don't want an angry God going after you Harry Reid Obama a lot of the other ones on the Republican Democrat Libertarian you better watch what you're doing because I tell you what God protects his own people and I tell you what, on your part, farmers, ranch hands, all, all forms of, of different things, you need to just pray. Get on your knees and pray. And allow the Lord to do a miracle for you. Amen. Because God's got a miracle. He's got, he's got lots of things to do for you. Just, just trust Him and believe in Him and be on fire with the Holy Spirit. Yahweh's spirit, amen. The Lord loves you. He paid a price on Calvary and he's, he's not finished with you yet. That's only the first step, being born again and learning. I mean, there's many things he has to do in your life. So he's going to protect you if you believe in him. Amen. So the word of God says, Yahweh says, In the last days I will pour out my spirit upon everyone. Your sons and daughters will pro pro prophesy. Your youth men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on the, my slave, both men and women, will I pour out my spirit in those days, these days. And they will pro pro prophesy. I will perform miracles in the sky above, and he sure has, the signs on the earth below, blood, fire, and thick smoke. The sun will be dark, the moon will be blood, and it just did that. Before the great fearful day of Yahweh comes, 
and, th and then whoever calls on the name of Yahweh will be saved. Are you calling on Yahweh's name? His image that, that saves you? Yeshua Jesus? Are you calling on him today? I hope so. Let's go to Colossians 3, verse 1 through 17. We need to call on his name all that we can. Everything in us. We need to call on his name. Say, Lord, be with us. Help us. Guide us. Show us what to do. Oh, Father God, we love you. Amen. That's what we need to be saying. So Colossians 3, verse 1 through 17. And it says, So if you were raised along with the Messiah, then seek the things above where the Messiah is sitting at the right hand of God Elohim. Focus your mind on things above, not on things of earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with the Messiah in God Elohim. And when the Messiah, who is the life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. And we said amen on that. Therefore, put to death the earthly parts of your nature, sexualities, impurity, lust, evil desires, greed, which is a form of idol. For it is because of these things that God's anger, I, let me repeat, it's because of these things, God's anger is coming on those who disobey him. True enough, you used to practice these things in life uh, you once lived, but now put all away, anger, uh, meanness, slander, uh, a, a busy of talk, never lie to one another, because you have stripped away the old self, which is, it, which is the way. And have put on the new self. You got your new self on? Amen. Which is continued being renewed and further and further knowledge. See, we, we are continuously being renewed. From further and further in the knowledge. Closer and closer to the image of our creator. Amen. The new self allows no room for uh, discrimination between... Uh, the, the difference is Cir circumcised or uncircumcised foreigner, slave free man or contrary and all the Messiah is everything Amen therefore as God's chosen people therefore as God's chosen people therefore as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, we're holy and dearly loved, my friends, by God. Clothe yourself with the feelings of compassion. You, it's not enough to have compassion. You have to have the feelings of compassion. And with kindness, so kindness is taken along with compassion here. Humility, gentleness, patience. Bearing with one another, and if anyone has complained against someone else, forgive him. Indeed, just as Yahweh has forgiven you, so you must forgive. Above all these things, clothe yourself with the, the love of God, which binds everything together perfectly. And let the shalom which comes from the Messiah be your heart's desire amen it's got to be a heart's desire for this is why you were called to be part of a single body hallelujah and be thankful let the word of the messiah in all its riches live in you as he teaches and counsels each of you in all wisdom and as you've seen psalms hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude to Yahweh Elohim God in your heart. That is everything you do or say. Do it in the name of Yahweh Yeshua, giving thanks through him to God Elohim the Father. Amen. 
Wow, that's a lot to cover, isn't that? That's beautiful, isn't it? So God wants us to be with Him. He wants us to be under the fire of the whole of the Holy Spirit of Yahweh. Amen. Because He loves us. He wants He wants to hold our hand and bring us to where we need to go. But if we're not willing to hold the hand of, of God and let him direct our lives, then then what are we doing? That's the question. So the refinement of the fire of, of Yahweh needs to be upon our lives. And that's also a protection too on our lives. And we need to allow it to come to us and, and study God's word and be very compassionate in what God is wanting us to do and studying his word and helping others. Amen. Because that's what it's all about. So let us go to Second Peter chapter three, verse three through seven. Amen. God is the one that strengthens us, amen. And we should be very privileged to know that, that God is with us. Who can be against us? Amen. Yeah, a lot of people try. But I tell you what, the end result is, boy, they're in trouble. Because God will protect us. And even if we have to go through trials and temptations, we're going to be of good cheer. Because one way or another, the Lord comes through. Amen. First, understand this. During the last days, scoffers will come, following their own desires. This is why they're scoffing, because they're following their own desires. Asking, where is the promise coming of this? For our fathers have died, and everything goes on just as it, it seemed to begin the beginning of creation. But see what they don't understand, there's a blinder on their eyes so they can't see the difference. And this is what's going on with them. But um, wanting to much to write about this, they overtake the facts that it was God by God, the word that long ago there was a heaven. And there was a land which arose of, of, out of the water exists between the waters and that by the means of these things the world of, of the time was flooded with water and destroyed it is by that same word that the present heaven and earth having been preserved are being kept for the fire until the day of judgment and when the ungodly people will be destroyed. It says they will be destroyed. Those that are ungodly. And so I plead with you. Let's check our motives out. Let's be under the fire of Yahweh. Let's, let's be refined by him every day. So that we can be pure and upright. It doesn't mean we're not going to have little mistakes. And we go to God when there's a mistake. And repent very quickly quickly and uh, we plead the blood of Yeshua Jesus cleanse us from all unrighteousness right but this this should show you that in the midst of trials and temptations that a lot of us are going through one way or another that we need to keep the faith we need to keep the refinement of God's fire on our lives and, let, and that's not only a refinement, but it's also protection. And it's also his part of his presence. And so we need to allow the fire of Yahweh to kindle upon our lives. And so it can draw that chaff right out of us. And we can be exactly what he wants us to be. Amen. Now we're going to go to 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 29. All right, let us go there. The word of God says, do, do not love the world or the things of the world. If someone loves the world, then the love from the Father is not in him. Do you love the things of the world? Well, then I guess according to scripture, you don't love God. 
Because you can't love two masters. You can't love the things of the world. Because the things of the world are contrary to what God is calling us to do. Amen. Because all the things of the world, the desires of the old nature, the desires of the eye, the uh, pretensions of life are not from the Father, but from the world. You know who the Father of this world is? Satan, not God. So we can't love the things of this world because we're loving what the devil is putting out there, not what God. So we got to love what the Father wants. And so we got to read his word to understand that. And, and the relationship as well is, is why we read the word and we follow the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the world is passing away along with its desires. But whoever does God's Elohim will remain forever. You want to remain forever? Follow the ways of the Lord. Amen. Children, this is the last hour. And boy, it's not kidding there when it's saying that. We are in the last hour, all right? You have heard that anti-Messiahs, or what I like to call them, anti-presidents, or anti-leaders uh, of all sorts, is coming. And they are already on the scene. That's the thing. And in fact, many of the anti-messiahs are the anti-leaders or anti-president, anti-mayors, because they're doing the opposite of what God wants them to do. It, you know, lead the people in righteousness, and they're leading the people in in more immoral things. Have arise now, and which is how we know that this is the last hour. That's how we know it's the last hour when the leadership stinks to high heaven. Like it does, because they're unmoral, they go against everything of the word. That's how we know it's the last days. So this is what the Bible's saying here. And they went out from us, but they were part of us, for they been part of us, and they would have remained with us. But you have received the Messiah, the anointing of Hakadosh. The, the holy, the holiness of God. Amen. Akadosh. And you know of this. It is not because you don't know the truth that I have written to you, but because you do know the truth. And because, because no liar has origin of truth, who, uh, who is the liar of all? If not the person who denies that Yeshua is the Messiah. So don't deny that he's the Messiah. He is the Messiah. And the word Messiah, the word Christ, basically means the anointing. He's the anointing that we need. Amen. He is the salvation that we need. He is the leader of leaders that we need. He's the everything and that all that is wrapped up in that word. Amen. Burning up the soil power of God. Messiah or Christ. Or or you can go directly in Hebrew, uh, uh Hamashiach, which is pretty too. But they all mean the same thing. Basically, and such a person in in an anti-messiah or anti-leader, or someone that's following the ways of the devil, he is denying the Father and the Son. Everyone who denies the unquenched Son is also denying the Father. So you do not want to deny any part of God. You want to embrace God. Amen. You want to embrace. All that he's done for our life from Genesis to Revelation. But the person who acknowledges the son, unquenched son, has the father as well. Amen. Let what let what you heard from the beginning remain in you. So let it remain in you. What you have learned is truth in this word. Remain it. Let it remain in you. And if what you have heard beginning remains in you, you also remain united with both the quint son and the father. And this is what he has promised, eternal life. So, hey, that's our hope, is remaining 
And God Almighty, man, let his fire burn away the chaff in our life and also at the same time protect us. So that's remain in God, amen? As he wants to remain in us. And remember what he did on that cross. Remember what Yeshua Jesus did on that cross. Whatever we do, remember, remember, remember. Keep it in our minds 24-7. Remember what he did on that cross. Don't forget, ever forget it. Don't ever forget, ever get, forget it a second. Remember all the time what he did on that cross. Amen. And while you're remembering all that, let's go to Romans chapter 6, verse 1 through 11. Amen. You know, the Lord loves us and he, he, he's, he's working with us and we got to allow him to keep working with us. Amen. Excuse me. So we got to keep letting him work with us. So let us read. So then are we to say, let us keep on sinning? So that there can be more grace. Heaven forbid. Did you hear what it said there? Heaven forbid. How can, can we who have died to sin still live in it? Don't you know that those of us who have been immersed into the Messiah Yeshua have been Immersed into his death, through immersing into the, his death, we are buried with him. So that just as through the glory of the Father, the Messiah was raised from the dead, likewise we too might live new, a new life, a new start. Amen. For if we have been united with him and death like this, we, we will also unite with him in the resurrection like this. We know that the old self was put to death on executed on a stake with him so that our entire body of, of our sinful uh, nature might be destroyed. And that we might no longer be enslaved to sin. See, we don't need to be, we're not enslaved to sin. See, the world is, unfortunately, as you can see, they really are enslaved to sin. When you look at all the evidence that's out there, sad but true, for someone who has died and has been cleared from sin. See, we've been cleared from sin, but sometimes those things will creep back and we got to just say no to it. And that could be kind of hard, but we can say no to it because we're not enslaved to those things anymore. But the world is. Now, since we died with the Messiah, we trust that we will also live with him. And we know that the Messiah has been raised from the dead, never to die again. Death has no authority over him, for his death was a quench event that need not to be repeated. But the life he keeps on living for God. In the same way, consider yourself to be dead to sin, but alive to God Elohim, by the union with the Messiah Yeshua. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? So we live for the Lord. Live for the Lord now. We don't live for ourselves. We don't live for our neighbors. We don't live for the government. Heaven forbid on that one, right? Boy, if you're living for the government, you boy, you need a lot of prayer over here. Let me tell you. Let's go to Revelation 12, verse 10 through 12. Amen. Let's keep the faith. Let's keep the faith. Let's do what's right in the Lord's sight, shall we? Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now have come God's victory, power, kingship, and authority of the Messiah, because the accuser of the brethren, who accused them day and night, before God, well, it sure sounds like the guy in the White House, doesn't it? Has been thrown out. 
Well, that's going to be nice when he gets thrown out, huh? And they defeated him because of the lamb's blood. Listen to this, because this is really, this, this really is rah rah. I'm going to read it again, that part. They defeated him because the lamb's blood, the testimonies of what the Messiah did on the cross, right? Because of their message of their witness, because we witnessed hard about People getting saved and turning to what is right in the Word of God. And even faced with that, even faced with that, even, you know, saying, hey, we're going to stand up to the Lord, even, even if they shoot us, whatever they do, we're going to, we are, we are going to tell them about the Lord. We're going to tell them about the truth, even though they want to go by anti truth. And they did not cling to life. We're not going to cling to our life because we already died with the Messiah. We just read about that, right? And so we're going to stand up for the principles that the Holy Spirit and the Bible show us. And we're going to stay close in our relationship with the Lord. Amen. Therefore rejoice, heavens, and you living on there. But, but woe to you, land and sea, for the adversary has come down to you. And he is very angry because he knows his time is short. Yep, the time is short for the adversary down here. That's true. So let us go to Revelation now, 8, 1 through 5. And the word of God says, When the Lamb broke the seven seals, there was silence in the heaven for what seemed a half an hour. And then I saw the seven angels who stand before God Elohim, and they were given seven shofars. And, and another angel came and stood at the altar with gold incense bowls. And he was given a large quantity of incense to add to the prayers of all God's peoples. On um, the gold altar to the front of the altar of the throne and the smoke and incense went up with the prayers of God's people when when the hand of the angel before God Elohim and then the angel took the incense bowl filled it with fire from the altar and threw it down onto the earth and there followed the pearls of thunder voice flashing of thunder and earthquakes so just know that your refinement, your relationship, the, the fire of Yahweh that's on your life, that's protecting you as well as is bringing you upright in, in his ways, that the Lord's, all the prayers of the saints are about ready to be answered right now. That's what it's referring to here. The prayers of the saints are about ready to be answered. And the devil... The devils that are in the people and the leadership, their times are short. Mark my words, their times are number, numbered by God. And their times are ending soon, very soon. And like the old song says, very, very soon we will see the Lord. Soon, very, very soon. Amen. So let us um, do in the closing Scripture by going to Joel chapter 4 verse 17. So don't be intimidated by the world, by your government that you live in. Don't be intimidated by these big corporations trying to steal your land. Don't be intimidated by any of that. Say, in the name of Jesus, I bind you Satan out of those people. We're going to stand on the principles of the word of God and, we're, and protect your land. Don't let the, the fowls of the devil take it. They're going to pollute it. And they're going to put all kinds of garbage on it. You know that already. So stand up for what is right. God wants you to stand up for what is yours too. He doesn't want the people to be thieving. I tell you what. The, the governments better stop coveting other people's stuff. The governments better stop stealing other people's stuff. And they better start following the Ten Commandments. The United States government, you better start following the Ten Commandments. Because I mean, you've broken every last one of them on the people. And you know what? It's for the people 
in America to understand that. That your government has broken all the Ten Commandments, all 27 of the amendments of the Constitution. So what else do you want them to do? Take all your land and make you have slave covers, co colors, and all kinds of things? You need to stand up and you need to get on your knees and pray and ask the Lord to remove these people that are coveters and the stealers of your stuff. And see what the Lord will do. Because the Lord will answer your prayers. If you pray him, he'll answer them. If you don't pray him, you, how can he have any answer prayers? So start praying. Now let's read the last scripture here together. But Yahweh will be your refuge for all his people. Not, not the non-people of his, but all his people. He's your refuge. A stronghold for the people of all of Israel. And that's the 12 tribes of Israel, the church and the Jews. Be strong. You will know that I am Yahweh your God. So you will know. Because we, we, we have a relationship, so we know our God, right? Live on to Zion, my holy mountain. And he's calling his, he's calling us his holy mountain. You know, and so we got to shine that light, be the salt of the earth. And do what's right. And let the refinement of Yahweh blaze on us. Amen. And don't be afraid of these evildoers. Boy, there's a lot of evildoers in this in these countries nowadays. And uh, we just need to stand together. And in prayer. Amen. So this is the point of time. I'm going to ask you. If you do not know the Mashiach, the Messiah, the Lord and Savior then pray this prayer. If you're a lukewarm person, pray this prayer. Dear God Yahweh, I ask you into my spirit, soul, and body as Lord and Savior of my life. Love you very much, Yeshua Jesus. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, I believe you're born again. Let's get you baptized in water. You know, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I believe, is happening now. But the baptism of water is very important. Second act acts of obedience after being born again i really believe that and uh you know it's basically you're dying out yourself raising up out of the water to your new life your new fresh start as a heavenly citizen of heaven amen so let's pray over the sick and while we're doing that i'm also praying for myself because i got an allergy problem as you can see but i'm not glorifying that i'm we're going to pray to the lord and we're going to see victory Including myself. We're all going to see victory in prayer. So let's pray with all our hearts to Father God on these things. We thank you, Father. Father, we ask for your scepter of mercy to be extended to all of us, Father. Father, we love you. And we thank you for, for your love and your mercy being extended into us. And uh, we, we believe until we, until we receive. And we love you and we praise you. In Yeshua Jesus' name, amen. Let's end this with the Shalom prayer. Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. Holiness brings the peace that passes all understanding as we have the refinement of the Holy Spirit, as we are doers of God's word through the relationship we have. May the Shalom of God be with you for now and forever. Shalom, Shalom, Shalom be with you.